to do right. Our subject for today, I'll kill you. What did I say? Ah, oh, come on, you didn't emphasize kill. Say it again. I'll kill you. Mm -hmm. Until you're dead. <laughs> Are you with me? All right. It's uh, uh, 9 after 12. I released you before 1. If you're not using this, please, what should you do? Turn it off. How many of you have been complying with that request? Can I see your honest hands on the Sabbath? The disobedient ones, can I? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad the Lord is merciful and gracious and kind. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say what? Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. The Bible said the words of the Lord are pure words. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. My words have no life. And so may God put his words in my mouth. And favor number three, think. Isaiah 118, come now, let us do what? Reason together, saith the Lord. The religion of Christ involves a large degree of common sense. Guided by the Spirit of God, of course. So God tells us, let us reason. If there isn't one text in the Bible that declares the first day of the week to be holy, why do you do it? reason if none of the bible characters from adam to john the revelator kept the first day holy who is your bible witness come now let us do what reason hey. let's pray father i thank you for life and for this tremendous honor to speak for you and Father, the secondary honor is to speak to those whom you love and who love the truth. And I'm referring to those in this building and those who have assembled online. If we've sinned against you, Father, we do it so effortlessly sometimes. Forgive us, please. Now, Father, possess me. The same way in the New Testament, people were demon-possessed. I want to be Holy Ghost-possessed. Possess my mind, my memory, my mouth, my body, my voice. That all the glory may go to your deserving name. But Father, let the blessing come to us. We don't deserve them, but we need them. Dear God, keep me humble in this pulpit. Please, touch the sick in this building and online. Put your sweet, sweet blessing upon little boys and little girls who may be watching. And when you come into your kingdom, dear God, save all of us. But before I say amen, Father, keep your hands over this country, the Republic of the United States. We're coming into an election. We do not know what the outcome will be. But we're so glad, dear God, you've got the world in your hands. Let's put our confidence in that fact. Now, Father, use me as you see fit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. What's our subject? I'll kill you. Go to Revelation 21. Let's read 7 and 8. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Revelation 21, 7 and 8. No comment. <laughs> Not one. Do you have Revelation 21? Seven and eight. If you have my, Brandon, good to see you. If you have my version, read with me. What does the Bible say? He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, 
and he shall be my son carefully now but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars pause that's not an endless list it is representative of all species of sin keep reading now shall have their part in the which burneth with and brimstone which is the second death they shall have their part now look at the list of sins the eight of them the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and liars and on and on and on lump all of that together and give me one word sin or sinners now keep this in mind finish the verse shall have their part in other words that's where they belong In the lake, which burneth with what? Fire and brimstone, finish the verse, which is the second death. Now, for those of you not familiar with the second death, there are two deaths in the Bible. There is the first. Finish my words. There's the second. The first is the one from which all will come back at the resurrection. Lazarus died. That was the first death. Did Jesus raise him? Yes or no? Yeah. Did he die again? Yes. The second death, there's no coming back. There's no, you know, I was, well, I was listening to you in the office. Uh, cancer warriors. Survivors. There are no second death survivors. Are you with me? That's the end of it all. Fire and brimstone symbolizes the second death. You entirely destroyed. Go to Revelation 20. Let's read verse 10. It says essentially the same thing. Revelation 20 verse 10. Read with me. And the devil that deceived them were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night for ever and ever. Fire and brimstone, that's where the devil will be thrown. But we discover from Revelation 21 verse 8, that's where sinners will be thrown. Now let's put two and two together. If sinners get what the devils get, it means that essentially sinners and the devil are no different. The devil is just a little more evil. Well, a lot more evil. But the mind of rebellion against God is the mind of Satan. It is the mind of a sinner. And so they end up the same place. Let's look at fire and brimstone again. We won't look at all the verses, but we must look at Revelation 14. Where's Roberta? Well, she's not here. Okay. Where? Oh, in a, okay. Okay. Revelation 14. Let's read from verse 9. By the way, what we're about to read is the most frightening passage in all the Bible. When you study it. It may not appear that way on the surface. When you study Revelation 14, 9 through 11, you are looking at the most fearful declaration in the entire Bible. And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship a beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Keep reading. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the Lamb and in the presence of the angels. Now we have fire and brimstone again, which again is the final destruction of the wicked. When that is done, Jesus Christ makes this world all brand new and he puts the believers, those who obeyed him, in this new world I say again those who obeyed him because the Bible says wherefore as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so shall the by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous the obedient will inherit the earth fire and brimstone 
are associated with the end, the destruction of sin and sinners. Now, let's go to Luke 17. No, not Luke 17. Let us go to Genesis. Well, yes, let's stay in Luke 17. We'll read from verse 26. What's our subject? Mm hmm. I really will, says God. You have Luke 17 and verse 26. Father in heaven, continue to be with me as I deliver this message, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Read with me. And as it was in the days of Noe, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Did it eat? They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, next verse. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. Keep reading. They did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. They planted. They built. Keep reading. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, you finish it, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. What does from heaven mean? Don't tell me. What does from heaven mean? It rained, what does fire and brimstone represent? The final destruction of the wicked. Where does this thing come from? From heaven. But what does from heaven mean? Go to Genesis 19 now. Genesis 19, my friends online, I hope you're still with us. Genesis 19, we will read from verse 24. In this chapter, God destroys two, well not two, more than two, but the two are named over and over. What are they? Sodom and, but there were actually five cities, Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and Bela. But the Bible uses Sodom and Gomorrah to represent evil civilizations, like Gog and Magog represents all nations opposed to God. Do you have Genesis 19? What verse did I say? 24, read with me. Then the Lord reigned, come on, start again. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, come on, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. Now we have out of heaven. Now we also understand what does out of heaven mean. What does it mean? From God. Now listen, yeah, yes, divine justice. Listen to the verse microscopically. Read nice and slow. Then who? The Lord. Stop. The Lord. Tell me some things about God that we usually believe which are correct. God is, is he nice? Mm -hmm. Is he sweet? Mm. Is he long-suffering? Yeah. Is he tender-hearted? Yeah. Is he merciful? Yeah. Did he destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is a God of wrath. I will kill you if you continue this life of sin. I you won't just die. I will kill you. Read verse 25 of Genesis 19. What does it say? And he overthrew, come on, those cities and all the, mm -hmm, and all the inhabitants that in the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him. She became a pillar of salt. And Abraham did what? Get up early to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he did what? Look toward Sodom and toward Gomorrah and toward all the land of the... And beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up how? As a smoke of a furnace. Now read the next verse. And it came to pass when God destroyed... No, that's enough. When God destroyed and we have destroyed again at the end of that verse or overthrew when god overthrew destroyed he overthrew i think in verse 20, 25 he destroyed in 29 destroyed again what am i trying to tell you 
destruction of the wicked is the deliberate personal work of God. It doesn't just happen. Finish my words. It doesn't just happen. He does it. I will kill you. Let's go to Genesis 2. Let the Bible clarify for those of you who seem visibly confused. Genesis 2. Do you have Genesis 2? Let's read verse 7. We'll read how? Microscope. Read with me nice and loud. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Let us look at the order of events. What did God start with? Dust. Hmm? Then we have a form. Because he did two things in that verse. The Lord God formed, then he breathed life. So the form was lying there before he breathed life into it. So we have the dust. Then we have the form of the body. Then we have life. Where did the life come from? God. Because God is life. The dust. The body. Life. God said to Adam... And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, Genesis 2, 16, 17, Thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof. Give me the Ipsy version. Mm -hmm. for, in, uh, for in the day thou eatest thereof, I'll kill you. Now why do I say that? We looked at the initial process of the creation of man. Dust, body, life. When you die, what happens first? The life, come on. Let's reverse the process. Are you with me? Reverse it. What goes? For a while, the body is there. Are you with me? Then eventually, what do we have? Dust. In this process, dust, body, life, who does it? God. In the reverse, who does it? God. God takes back. Yes. Which means essentially, any time someone dies, God either does it or he allows it. You see, in a football game, there's some guys on the bench. God is never on the bench. God is a quarterback. Are you following me? You don't put God on the bench of life. God is the quarterback of the universe. He's always in the game. Let's go to Matthew 10. Matthew 10. You have Matthew? Only Sister Skeet answered the preacher. All right. <laughs> Okay, you have Matthew 10. Let's read verse 29. You have that? All right, read with me. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? Carefully now, microscopically, and one of them, come on, shall not fall on the ground without your father. Now, wait a minute, let's think. Jesus is using, you see, in the, sac in the sanctuary system, you had to bring offerings. Are you with me? The highest was a bull, a heifer. You really had to be rich to bring a heifer. Then we had cows, we had goats, we had sheep. Of living things, all the way down to what? Turtle doves. You had pigeons, then turtle doves. Notice they said living things. That was for the poor of the poor. So Jesus picked something below a turtle dove. Are not two sparrows. Sold for a farthing. In other words, they are virtually without value. Without. You walk down the street, you see a penny, you keep walking. You cannot be seen picking up a penny. You walk down the street, you see a $20 bill. You stop in your tracks. Before someone else sees it. Are you following me now? 
two sparrows sold for a farthing. Yet Jesus says, not one of them dies without God's permission. I am told Buddhists won't even step on an ant. Let me sound ridiculous. No ant dies without God's permission. Because all life is from God. When Nebuchadnezzar put the three Hebrew boys into the flaming fire, the, the furnace, did they die? Was, what was Nebuchadnezzar's purpose? That they should die. God said, uh-uh. And so God restricted the normal laws of physics and chemistry and whatever else. So the fire was not allowed to do what fire normally does. Because it isn't fire that kills you, it is God. When Noah came out of the ark with his family, God put into animals fear of human beings. So that they would avoid human beings because there were only eight human beings and lots of animals. And wild. In order to prevent human beings from being consumed by wild animals, God put the fear of man into animals. That is why a wild animal prefers to avoid you. But if you come close... You go hiking in California, <laughs> up in the mountains, and you come face to face with a bear. The bear does not know Genesis chapter 9, verse 2. It will kill you. Are you with me? Mountain lions will kill you. A water moccasin does not know that he has to be afraid of you. He will kill you. So God put the fear of man into them. So they would leave man alone. But if someone goes running through the jungles of Africa or the plains and gets eaten by a lion, God allowed it. Now, why is that? Before I tell you why that is, we see that God's reign upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, Genesis 19, verse 24, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. But when we read Revelation 21, we read Revelation 21, 8, Revelation 20, verse 10, Revelation 14, 10, we discovered fire and brimstone represent what? The final destruction of the wicked. Now, keep this in mind, listen to Jesus. As it was in the days of Lot. So shall it be also in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. When he comes a second time. Or the third as well to destroy. Fire and brimstone consumed Sodom and Gomorrah. Fire and brimstone will consume the wicked and this entire earth. Yes, this entire earth will go up in flames. And God will do it. Now, listen to this quotation. Write it down. Review and Herald, March 10, 1904, paragraph 3. What did I say? <laughs> Review and Herald, March 10, 1904, paragraph 3. Listen very carefully. It is the glory of God to be merciful, full of forbearance, kindness, goodness, and truth. That glorifies him. But the justice shown in punishing the sinner is as verily the glory of God as the manifestation of his mercy. When God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah, God was glorified. When God poured plagues upon Egypt, God was glorified. Because every plague attacked an Egyptian God. And God told uh, Moses in Exodus 12, I will execute judgment upon all the gods of Egypt. When God finally destroys all sinners and this world by fire, he will be glorified 
Because God is glorified when he forgives. And he is glorified when he destroys. Because God does nothing that does not glorify him. God is not in the business of making himself look bad. The destruction of the wicked will glorify God. Having said that. We read Genesis 2, 16, 17 again. You know it very well. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, I know, in the day thou eatest thereof, I will kill you. I made you and I'll take you out. Make two more that look just like you. <laughs> because I'm God. I'll kill you. That's not because God is harsh. God hates sin. I mean, God hates sin. And we love it. So we have a problem. Sometimes we talk about the innocent baby. What is an innocent baby? Okay, let's leave out Jesus. What is an innocent baby? Listen to the Bible. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. When do we get the carnal mind? Mm -hmm. That baby developing, when he or she emerges, if that person does not meet Christ, will hate God. And will try to destroy God. Because the ultimate purpose of sin is to kill God. Ah, oh, you didn't hear what I said. The ultimate purpose of sin is the removal of God from existence. And the ultimate purpose of righteousness is to remove sin from existence. Now you pick a side. If there's something you and I are doing that offends God, God is telling you and me right now, if you don't stop this, finish my words, I'll kill you. And when I kill you, I'll be glorified. Because anything that removes sin is a good thing. I'll kill you. And so today, at 24 minutes to uh, whatever it is, I want you to see God a little differently. Is he sweet? Yes. I always say I like God. God has never done me anything wrong, and he really hasn't. And if I end up in hell, it's my fault 150%. God does not play a role in choosing people for hell. Notice what I said. He does not play a role in choosing people for hell. He plays a role in choosing them for heaven. But they must sign on that choice by surrender. Or they sign on their own choices by opposing God. They end up in hell. The Bible says hell was prepared for the devil and his angels, not for you. We choose death. We choose the wrath of God. Now go with me quickly to Ephesians 5. We'll read from verse 1. What's our subject? I will kill you. Mm -hmm. And still be righteous. And sinless. I'll kill you. Because I can't allow your sin to contaminate the universe forever. I will kill you. I'll take you out. Like a surgeon removes a cancerous tumor. I will remove you. Father in heaven, continue to be with me, I pray, please, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Ephesians 5, from verse 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Now carefully read with me, but fornication and all uncleanness, and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become the saints, neither filthiness nor 
foolish talking, nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger or unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Stop! You see that list of sins from verse 3 to, to, to uh, 5? Ten listed, just a partial list. Now read verse 6. You read out loud. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these, stop. What are these things? All the stuff listed in verses 3 and 5 to 5. Because of these things, keep reading, cometh the wrath of God. Come on, upon the children of, because all those things are the acts of disobedience. And God's wrath comes upon disobedient people. His wrath. And we see the symbols of God's wrath, fire and brimstone. Total destruction. When the flood came and God destroyed the world, the flood destroyed but did not purify. Are you with me? But when God wraps this world in a ball or makes it a ball of fire, the fire will destroy and the fire will purify. My brothers and sisters, God is not a sniper hmm. in a ghillie suit waiting three days until you pass by. Calvary is not hidden. Calvary is public on a hill, very public event. And we all have access to Calvary. If you cannot see Calvary carefully, the Bible says, look at nature. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The problem isn't there is no evidence of God. The problem is we have a mind that ignores the evidence. And ignoring evidence is the same thing as choosing against God. And so the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Now go to Ephesians 2 and then we'll, we'll come to an end. Ephesians 2. Read from verse 1. You have Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in whom? The children of disobedience now. Someone intentionally disobedient to God is driven by whom? Satan. The devil works in the children of disobedience. Then who works in the obedient child? The Spirit of God. You know, sometimes I'm not recommending it, but you, you see these little videos on Twitter. Or all you see is people fighting. In high schools, somewhere, at a game, they're swing, they're fighting, they're fighting. And I, I said, Father, that is temporary demon possession. You don't believe me? You ask. You answer the question. Who is in possession of the mind of someone fighting and fighting? Let me frighten you a little bit. In Revelation 7 verse 1, no need to go there. The Bible says, after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the, the winds of strife. Now, that symbolizes God has sent angels, of course, under the control of the Holy Spirit to control all the violence in the world. Yes. You see, Helene came by, caused destruction. Then Brother Milton came by and caused destruction. Do you know why there wasn't more destruction? Because the Spirit restrains not just people, but nature. Now the devil also uses nature. He's the prince of the power of the air. But Christ is the creator of the air. So through the spirit, he controls the devil. So the devil may send another flood, another hurricane, or whatever you call them. Because the season ends in November. 
but the spirit will restrain and restrict the damage. I'm saying that to say this. Instead of people saying, where is God? Look at all this trouble. They should say, thank God it wasn't worse. Now, let me bring that down to humanity. People are becoming crazier and crazier. If someone cuts you off, don't get out of your car. I'm not joking. There are people led by demons. If the spirit of God is being withdrawn, which one is taking over? Simple common sense. The spirit of the devil. There are the devil controls most of the world. Don't fight with people. Because you can't win against a demon. He cuts you off. Thank God he didn't hit you. He hit you. Thank God he didn't kill you. The meek shall inherit the earth. Someone gets in front of you in the line at Kmart. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Somebody whatever. Okay. And save your life. Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Go to Romans 5, then I'll finish. How many times have I said I'll finish? Go to Romans 5 quickly. Romans 5. We read 8 and 9. Then we go to Revelation 6. We read 12 to 17. Then I'm done. It's unfair to God to present him only as a God of love and tenderness and not a God of wrath. It's un because when things go wrong, people say, where's God? Because they never see God. They see God only as, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. They don't see a God of righteous punishment. What book did I say? What chapter? Five. What verses? Eight and nine. Read with me. What does it say? But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ. Now read nine carefully. What does that say? Stop. Read it again. Much more than being just by his, we shall be saved from wrath through him now. Jesus saves you from wrath. Question for you. Who is wrath? <laughs> his wrath and God. And we'll see that when we get Revelation 6. When you are saved, what do you save from? Is it only sin? If sin had no condemnation, what are you being saved from? Ah, oh, you didn't hear me. If sin did not have a condemnation, there's no need to save you from it. What's being saved from sin is being saved from the condemnation of sin, which is one word, D E A. T-H, what is that? Death. Or as we said this morning, I will kill you. So the Bible says, Romans 5, 9, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Why is that possible? Because the wrath of God was poured out on Jesus. On Calvary. Mm -hmm. In the Garden of Gethsemane, God sent an angel to help him. On Calvary, no angel came. And nobody's listening. In Gethsemane, God sent the angel Gabriel to sustain Jesus so that he might go to the cross and suffer the wrath. On the cross, all the angels backed up. And God poured his wrath upon Jesus. Now, if God can pour his wrath upon Jesus, who never... What will God do to sinners? Now, go to Revelation 6. The chapter of the seals, I won't get into the seals. You can have Sister Perry conduct a class on that sometime. The seals, Revelation, look at Revelation 6. Let's read from 12. Seal 6. And don't connect that with the military. It's the sixth seal. Okay, do you have Revelation 6 verse 12? 
You don't have Revelation 6 verse 12? Let's pray. Father, I really am coming close to the end. Give me more power, I pray, and humility. In Jesus' name, amen. Read with me, and held when it opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became dark as sackcloth and hair, and the moon became as blood. Keep reading. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens departed as a scroll where it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of there. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. At the coming of Christ, just before he comes, there will be so much upheaval on the earth, mountains will move. I know you're looking at me strangely, but people never expected 9-11. Hmm? They never did until it happened. Mountains will move, islands will disappear. Now, verse 15, pick it up for me, let's go on. And the kings of the earth, come on, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains and every bondman and freedman hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains and sent to the mountains and rocks what fall on us and hide us from the face of him that and from the wrath come on who's the lamb mm -hmm. <laughs> hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Who is that? God the Father. And from the wrath of the Lamb. When we sin against God, we sin against the Father of Jesus. For thousands of years, Jesus has watched what we do to his Father. Uh, you're sleeping with your eyes open. He has watched what we have done to his father. And when probation closes, oh Lord, there is no hiding place down here. Hide us from the face. A sinner cannot look into the face of a sinless God. But we know from Revelation 22 verse 4, the, the saved will see his face. The sinners will say, hide us. That's why sinners can't go to heaven. They'll suffer more in heaven than in hell. They can't take it. You ever heard of mercy killing? Destruction of the wicked is mercy killing. They cannot take heaven. Hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. How can you combine wrath and the lamb? I can understand the wrath of the wolf. The wrath of the hyena. The wrath of a lion. The wrath of a lamb. We know of a lamb like beast that speaks like a dragon. Now we have a lamb that destroys. Hide us. My brothers and sisters, destruction of sinners is God's deliberate work. We choose it, and he does it. I will kill you. But God wants to say, and he said it on Calvary, I want to save you. But you're forcing me to kill you. Which one do you want? Save. I'll kill you. And my conscience will not be bothered. I will rid the universe of your behavior and your influence. I'll kill you. How many of you want to hear God say, I want to save you. Can I see your hand? I want to stand up with me. I want to save you. God is good. 
Yes, he is. But when he destroys sinners, he'll be very good. I want us all to make a recommitment of our lives to God. You see, God's long-suffering is not the result of senility. God is not senile. He doesn't have Alzheimer's. God knows how terrible his punishment is. And so he puts it off as long as he can. You didn't hear me. God knows how terrible he puts it off. But at some point, he has to say, enough is enough. He says that in two directions. Enough is enough. You've sinned enough. I've got to stop you. Enough is enough. You've suffered enough for me. I'm going to deliver you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Our Father in heaven, we do not want an unbalanced view of who you are and your character. When we as fallen human beings, dear God, with limited understanding, hear the word love, we never think of punishment. We never think of justice. And so we see you only as a God of tenderness, and that's what you are. Compassion, that's what you are. Long-suffering, that's what you are. We never stop to think you are a God of wrath. And one day, Father, those who reject you through disobedience will suffer your wrath and the wrath of the Lamb. But you're not willing that any should perish. And so as we stand in your presence now, dear God, I ask you, exert yourself a little more. Command the Spirit to move a little more powerfully in the heart of someone to stop whatever he or she is doing that has the guillotine of heaven hanging over his or her neck. Ah, Father, whatever we serve on this earth by serving you, it is nothing compared to the glories waiting for us. And so, Father, while it is absolutely biblically true, I will kill you. We prefer to hear you say, I want to save you. That's what we want, Father. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice, in line, online, and in this building. Father, let us leave this church determined to hear your voice. I want to save you. I have died for you. I want that you and my kingdom have prepared a place for you. Hear this humble prayer, Father. And when you come, let us be with Jesus as we watch the wicked being destroyed. But let us watch knowing we have done all we can to bring others to Christ. Bless us. Put a double blessing on our children. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let God's people say, Amen. And